Hi, hey everybody. Um, I'm, I think I'm the first one here to talk about failure, because these guys are rock stars. But uh, I've been there, uh, you know, fastest growing, uh, Portland Business Journal, fastest growing company five years in a row from, uh, I'm not good at math, let's just say until 2011. And then 2012 hit. And, whoa. So my deck isn't up. I can wing it. That's cool. Um, so in 2012, <clears throat> Sorry, in 2013, I was looking at my first down year ever in 2012. After 15 years of managing teams, I don't like to lose and I don't like to make less money. But that's what happened. I was totally disconnected from my team. They were completely apathetic. I lost faith in, in them and, and what I was doing. Uh, my pipeline shrank. Um, I had all kinds of problems that I really, honestly, I didn't like to get up in the morning and go to work for the first time in my life. Um, I, uh, by, I, I needed something special to happen. I'm gonna try it one more time, thank God. Okay, because <laughs> I, don't, I don't do good with, without my notes. Um, so anyway, I, I, I needed a Jerry Maguire moment. If you haven't read the article, it's, if you Google it, it's there. But uh, I was laying in my son's bunk bed as he was falling asleep and I was like maybe two feet from the ceiling and I was like, I'm effed, I need to, I need to come up with something. <laughs> so I came up with the credo. I, I wrote it, uh, thought about it, wrote it down, typed it up on my computer until about 1.30 a.m. in April of 2013. And the very next day, I went in to pitch a piece of business completely differently. It was all about solving their problems, not selling them search marketing. Uh, the, that afternoon, my VP, my first hire of 10 years, quit. Um, completely, suddenly, shockingly. And I knew I, I, normally, without the credo, I would have just thrown in the hat, um, you know, gone into the closet with a bottle of Jack Daniels. But I, instead, I told her, you know what, it's real, I'm as unhappy as you, but I wrote this credo. Maybe you should look at it, sleep on it, and see if you're interested in sticking around. She slept on it, didn't resonate with her, and at that moment, I knew I had something special. Because if it didn't resonate with her, then it, it's like a magnet. It needed to attract or repel. And within a week, I presented the uh, credo to my team and said, you're in or you're out. You got three days to figure out if this credo makes sense for you. And uh, thankfully, half my team left. Right, right on the spot. So um, normally you would freak out about that, and I sort of did because it's hard to find people in digital marketing that fast. Turns out it's harder than I thought. For every, <laughs> for every person, <clears throat> for every position I needed to fill, I had to hire three people to find that one person. So from May of 2013 to December of last year, I was over 200% employee turnover. And you know what, I'm actually proud of that. I don't en encourage you to replicate it. Uh, but um, I used to do everything for my employees instead of doing what I thought was right for the business. And so I'm going to tell you about how I, I went from, navigated this journey without losing my shirt financially, but certainly causing a lot of uh, emotional stress, and we're now in a position to have our, our best year ever. So there were three basic tips. There's a lot more to it than this, but I only have eight minutes, maybe three minutes left. So first thing I did <coughs> was lean on EO. Been a member for eight years, been uh, membership uh, for four of those. I'm not sure why. Um, glutton for punishment, but I, I love the crew and I love what we're doing. So um, I actually pulled in a mentor through EO as well, and he gave me the, the biggest piece of advice that I've been using the last year, which is to inspect, not expect. For eight years, I expected my team was kicking ass and they were the best in the business, but I did not inspect that, and I was wrong and it cost me. I built an advisory board three years ago. Uh, there are a bunch of agency owners, uh, part of Portland Ad Fed called the Round Table I lean on, and then I completely rebuilt my management team. There was nobody at Anvil that was there in May of 2013 except for me. And, I'm not, and again, it, it's whatever had to happen to get it to the right place. The second thing I did was build, realize when I launched Anvil in 2000, I wanted to build a family, a place where we'd all go to retire and be best friends and, and unicorns and rainbows. And it turns out you actually have to, you're better off building a business. So I realized people were gonna leave and like Janelle, I had people leave and take clients and, and build competing businesses. It hurts, you're kind of proud, but mostly you're pissed. And um, so the, the biggest takeaway is accountability. My new team is fully accountable for all of their actions and decisions. It's built into who we are. This is our offsite at uh, Silcox Hut just uh, last month. A lot of good team building, and it's a team, and it's, and it's a business, but it's okay if there's still some semblance of trying to build a family. I'm okay with it. But last but not least, <clears throat> in the old days, 
I was the only agency in town that did search worth, worth, uh, worth a damn, and it was easy to pick up the phone and get business. <clears throat> Three years, four years ago, that changed. <clears throat> Sorry. And I actually had, every time I lost a client, it was harder and harder to get a new one. So in January of this last year, I focused on actually growing and retaining our current clients, learning from Jill, who's up next, using her technique called Wowism to delight the clients and grow them. And I'll tell you what ended up happening there. Um, for the previous three years, I'd lost, my team had net lost 13, 12 to 13% growth, meaning I couldn't, re, they couldn't, they were losing more business than they were retaining or growing. I set a 20% grow, growth goal this last year, 2014, and we hit 25%. That's a half million dollar variance between what I was losing and what I gained. That meant I didn't have to go find another half million dollars worth of business. Um, we struggled in 2013 to create case studies and testimonials, which are the lifeblood, delighting and elevating is what we do. So let's just say we increased those case studies last year as we got dialed as a, as a new team. Um, I actually increased the profitability and we have the strongest pipeline we've ever had. Uh, well, we hit our, our target sales goal beating every other year in history, that's the plan. Uh, so anyway, uh, thank you for your time, and, and I would love to introduce you to Jill, who's, who's my uh, secret idol, or maybe not so secret, um, you know, CEO of Ruby Receptionist, and she did what most entrepreneurs dream of doing, which is selling her company, but keeping it running and keeping the magic going. Uh, as you probably know, Fortune Magazine, top three best places to work in the country. Uh, I think she's been 20 years in a row fastest growing, something like that. <laughs> Let's give it up for, for Jill.